right, now we're going to work on the different quotient. So I have an f of x up here, and the directions are to use the difference quotient, which is f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. So that is our difference quotient. So I'm going to show you how to use this. Now we need you to remember, f of x is just a name. It's not multiplication. It has nothing to do with the outside of the function. The only thing that f of x does is it says this is the name of the function. So it's kind of like my last name is Lachlan. That is the name of the function. When my family grows, we it doesn't change my last name. It's still the same function, but it changes what's inside of our function. Does it change my house? No, I still have the same house that I had before I had a daughter. Does it change my job? Nope, still the same job I had before I had my daughter. The thing it changes is what's inside. For me, it changes what's inside my house. It changes what's inside of me. It changes all this stuff about the inside. So you're not going to change the actual equation on the outside. You're going to change inside the x. Because anyone can tell you who's had kids, when you become a parent, you're no longer the same person you were a week before you became a parent. You're a completely different person on the inside. So the inside is what's going to change. I can't emphasize that enough. So when I do these, I say, okay, difference quotient. We have f of x plus h minus f of x. Well, I know what f of x is, right? So I know that this right here is going to become f of x. h, I don't have an h up there, right? H is just a letter. I can't do anything to H. H is just going to stay there. So what I need to figure out, I need to figure out is what is F of X plus H. So that's what we're going to do here. F of X plus H. Now if I ask for F of 5. Most students can say, well, for F of 5, that means X equals 5, correct? So if x equals 5, I would plug a 5 in there. Once I plug in, the x is gone. It is now 5. So the difference here is when I'm replacing x, I am replacing it with x plus h. So I get rid of the original x, and I plug in x plus h. And any time you substitute, you should always use parentheses. If you don't put parentheses here, it's really going to screw up your problem. So we're going to take... The original 4x squared minus 1, but instead of x, I'm going to put x plus h. Remember, it changes who you are on the inside. To my students, other than now I give a ton of analogies about kids, to my students, I'm still the same person. They don't see me as a mom, other than I talk about my kid nonstop, so I mean, I kind of am. But outwardly, if you just saw me in the street, you might go, oh, cool hair. But that's about all. You want to go, oh man, she must have a kid. If I don't have mine with me, you're not going to automatically assume that because outwardly, not much has changed. Inwardly, a ton has changed. So inside that X is where you put that change. Then minus one, that states. My job didn't change. My house didn't change. Outwardly, you can't obviously tell that I have a kid. But once you start talking to me, you find out she's a lot of my life and I can't shut up about her. So we get here. Now I did accidentally miswrite this. I forgot my square. That will automatically ruin your problem because I miswrote the problem. So make sure you don't miss any pieces. Now when you're in this, I try to emphasize when I teach developmental math, I don't get to teach it very often, but when I teach 305, I try to emphasize to them when parentheses can go away and when parentheses cannot. And I tell them there's only one way parentheses truly go away, and that's multiplication. Multiplication can make parentheses go away. Addition cannot, subtraction cannot, exponents cannot make multiplication go away, or cannot make parentheses go away. Only multiplication can make your parentheses go away. 
So I need to get rid of the exponent. Anything squared is times itself. Okay? So if I'm going to get rid of that, I'm going to say 4 times x plus h times x plus h. Because the order of operation says you have to do exponents before you can multiply. So I cannot distribute the 4. I have to deal with that exponent first. So I got rid of the exponent. Now it's all just multiplication. Now when I do these, I have a number times a parentheses times a parentheses. I like to start with the parentheses and just leave that number out there. And so I add an extra set of parentheses. And on the parentheses, you're going to FOIL. Multiply the first term by the entire second set of parentheses. Then multiply the next term by the entire second set of parentheses. So this 4 is just going to fall. This negative 1 is just going to fall. And then I'm going to keep the answer in parentheses because that 4 still needs to be multiplied. Don't lose that multiplication. So x times x, x times h, h times x, I'm going to put it xh again, and h times h. Okay. Now you can distribute here or you can take an extra step and combine like terms. I'm a fan of the less actual work I have to do, the better. So I'm going to add rather than multiply. So I'm going to combine these. If I have one xh and I'm getting another xh, I have two xh's total. You cannot change exponents when you're, multiple, when you're adding or subtracting, only when you multiply or divide. That became this. And then to get rid of the parentheses, I'm going to distribute. So we have 4x squared plus 8xh plus h squared. Minus 1 just false. I cannot combine terms anymore. This is f of x plus h. Now we're not done yet. It would be really nice, but we're not done yet. So far, it seems like a very random set of things that we're doing. And it kind of is at the college algebra level and the entry level. It becomes more understandable why we're doing what we're doing once we get into calculus. But I can't show you that until we can at least do the math. And so we're going to talk about this. Please don't ask me why we're doing that. I'm not teaching calculus at the moment. I'm not going to go make a calculus video. It's been about... 15 years since I've taken calculus, uh, and I haven't taught it in quite a while. I haven't even taught pre-cal in many years. They've got me focusing on lower levels. So I'm not going to explain how it works in the calculus because I've just been out of it for a little bit too long. But we've got to do the math. Again, this video is targeted at your entry-level college algebra type students. So I'm going back to my different quotients. First piece of my difference quotient is f of x plus a. That's this function down here. So I'm going to write it up here. So I'm going to have my difference quotient. I need f of x plus h. That's my 4x squared plus 8xh plus h squared minus 1. Then I have minus, and I'm going to put my f of x in there. Now the problem is anytime you plug in, we need to use parentheses. Just like when I plug the x plus h in, anytime you plug in, use parentheses. And then remember, parentheses can only go away with multiplication. Addition, subtraction do not make them go away, and they don't go away just because we would like them to go away. I could make something in math just go away because I wanted to. It wouldn't be parentheses. I could make the whole subject go away, right? Not really. Then I'd be out of a job, and I love my job. So minus f of x. 4x squared minus 1. Put it in parentheses. What the parentheses are going to do is they're going to take that middle minus sign, and they're going to distribute it to that second set of parentheses. That way, that sign gets changed. I'll tell you in my classes, 
Anytime you're supposed to distribute a negative and you don't, it is a two point mistake. Even if it's only a three point question, that's a two point mistake if you were supposed to distribute a negative and you don't. By the time you get to college credit, math, we're expecting you know how to distribute a negative really, really well. So right off the bat, this is probably about a five or six point question for me. So two points is right there. Can you get that sign changed when needed? Denominator is just an H. So I'm gonna leave that as just an H in black. You can kind of see how I'm trying to do my color coding. I did one in purple, I have the original in blue, and then everything from my formula stayed in black. So that was my original question. Okay. Now we're going to simplify. To get rid of parentheses, you use multiplication. In front of the parentheses that are purple, technically I have a 1. So I'm just multiplying by 1, which is why they have that illusion of just going away. But they're not just going away. They are actually going away because a positive one is being multiplied, which just does not change that. So we are left with 4x squared plus 8xh plus h squared minus 1. That is the first set that had the positive 1 going throughout it. The second set, we have a negative 1 over here. So you've got to distribute that negative 1 because the only way parentheses can go away is with multiplication. So I have minus 4x squared, and negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1, all divided by h. Okay. Combine like terms again. 4x squared minus 4x squared. 8xh doesn't have anything to combine with h squared doesn't have anything to combine with. Negative 1, positive 1, and cancel it. You should get things canceling if you did it correctly. If you didn't do it correctly, things may not cancel. But then you're not going to get it right anyway because things didn't cancel. Okay, so this leaves us with 8xh plus h squared divided by h. And for every fraction, we should know by now they always need to be reduced, correct? The problem is I cannot cancel the H's because there's still math to be done up here. I still need to add things before I can figure out what the number is to see if it can reduce. It would be like if I said 10 plus 5 divided by 12 plus 5. I can't reduce those 5's. Because 15 17 is not the same thing as 10 12s. Likewise, I cannot reduce the 1s. That will not work. Because 5 over 7 is not the same thing as 15 17s. I can't reduce anything when it's connected by addition and subtraction. The only way I can reduce is if it's multiplication. So what I'm going to do, since I cannot reduce here, I'm going to factor the numerator. Because factoring, GCF factoring, is like undoing distribution. So I'm undoing and putting multiplication back in. And I can reduce when multiplication is around. The only thing that would be able to reduce would be just an H, because that's all that's in the bottom. If I had a number in the bottom, I'd try to factor out numbers as well. But if I factor only an H out of the top, and I'm going to say, OK, I have one H here. And I have two H's there. So in common, there's only one H that could have been distributed. And then we're going to say, all right, if I take an H away from both, I'm left with an 8X over here. Plus sign. I have two H's. If I take one away, I'm still left with one H. Divided by H. Now on top, I have H times parentheses. And on bottom, I just have H. I can now reduce those, and I am left with 8x plus h. And to kind of enforce that point, if I had 5 times 4 plus 3 divided by 5, that's still the same thing as 7, whether I do the multiplication first and then divide, or do the multiplication, the addition, and then divide, or if I just reduce the 5s, and say 4 plus 3. 
No matter what, it's still going to be 7. You can reduce when it's multiplying. You cannot reduce when it's connected to addition or subtraction, when that term is. So be very careful with that. This is your difference quotient. Find f of x plus h. Be sure you distribute your negative in f of x. Cancel. Factor. Reduce.